March Madness takes a new meaning here in 2024 as the Vegas Thrill have found their residency. And with 12 matches down and 12 to go, the Thrill enter the second half of this inaugural season, hosting a familiar foe as the San Diego Mojo make the trip east to the Dollar Loan Center here in Henderson. And on Ninth Island Night, we are so happy to welcome you inside. Alongside Victoria Dennis, I'm Daniel Gilman. So delighted to be with you here on this Sunday afternoon. And well, Victoria, the vibes around this Hawaiian theme night, incredible. Absolutely. The crowd shows up and shows out for Vegas. And being able to see that island-rooted community here, it's very special. Well, speaking about going back to her roots, last week, Alicia Glass Childress went back to her home state of Michigan and was honored with the Thrill's first Player of the Week nominee. Big time. And also first setter to be nominated as well. And if I'm going to pick a setter in this league to be nominated for a first time, well, it's Glass Childress. She finds way to score in transition herself and putting her hitters in a scorable position. No matter whether she's in system or out of system, she's a big time veteran for the thrill and knows how to lead on the court day in and day out. Her sixth double-double led to the first PVF reverse sweep in the league's history. And on the other side of things, we highlight a rookie for San Diego. Temi thomas Ilara has been lighting the world on fire on the right side. On fire and a fierce one at that. 102 kills on the season so far for her. An incredible athlete. What makes her so special is that she's able to score in transition and out of system. It's really hard to do that for athletes, but for her, she's a well-oiled machine. She finds a way to put Put the ball away for San Diego. Really excited to break down our setter matchup and our right side matchup, and we'll get to that in a minute. Stick around for this Sunday edition of PVF Volleyball. NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we are only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. because one of their best players is also one of the best players in the world. We get a chance to see Alicia Glass Childress laser that goes over. Alicia Glass Childress helps get that nice Vegas looking for their first set of the day. They've got it for Grand Rapids. Glass Childress with a sneak attack. Sour Glass Childress fell. And the Vegas thrill come back to life, winning each of the last three sets. From club or high school courts to championship arenas, Spalding has been the trusted partner of volleyball players for generations. Our team of dedicated professionals isn't just about selling equipment, we're about supporting your journey. Spalding offers a comprehensive range of high performance systems, nets, and accessories meticulously crafted for every skill level, budget, and playing style. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, Spalding's knowledgeable staff will guide you, equip you, and cheer you on every step of the way. before the light as we welcome you back inside the Dollar Loan Center. And we get set for this matchup. Let's take a look at San Diego's starting lineup and an offense that you mentioned, Temi thomas Ilara has been leading, but it certainly is the setter in Newt Sara Tomcom leading the way. Right, a veteran, well-oiled machine, Tomcom. We know she knows how to run an offense and she does that really well for San Diego. So we know that San Diego, they want to find those middles. We'll touch on that a little bit later. 
San Diego fell in three sets here in Vegas. Vegas came from behind to win in five sets down in San Diego the last time around. Hannah Maddox, bit of an injury midweek, but she's back and ready to roll alongside Gabby Gonzalez on the left side. Ready to roll with that momentum coming off that reverse sweep, and now they find themselves in their home gym. It's going to be packed in here. We know that it holds close to 5,500. Vegas shows up and shows out the thrill. They feel that love, and they feel that momentum. And in that five-set match on February 29th, a league record that still holds as Cat Bell exploded for nearly 30 kills. No surprise here. 28 kills last meeting versus San Diego. She's locked in the zone. She's playing opposite this ball game. That's her bread and butter there on the right side of the court, front row and back row. Also very excited for this libero matchup. Kylie Murr, one of the best college liberos we've seen in the last few years. And Shara Venegas, who has spent 15 years at the helm of the Puerto Rico national team. And there is Kylie Murr right on cue. And on this ninth island night, why don't you explain a little bit of what is being lifted out and what we have on our necks? Right, so these are handmade lays that were made for both of the teams, and it just shows in the community for Hawaii, for the Polynesian culture. It's such a beautiful culture, and we're calling it Ninth Island because you touched on it earlier. Uh, the highest concentrated population of Polynesian and Hawaiians are in Vegas, so it's really awesome to see that being honored here with the thrill. And as you see, Fran Flory, the legendary head coach who spent over 20 years leading LSU. And I'll tell you what, when we talked to Fran earlier this week, she's excited about the hurdle that her team has gotten over now that they start the second half of the year. And on the other side, Taiba Hanif Park, they've only played eight matches, so a little bit to go before they get to their halfway point. Right, and they're finding that momentum, right? San Diego, they have that wind under their wing. They have Kylie Cole right now back on their roster, or now on their roster. Cole, she was living in Vegas. Her hubby was playing here with the Raiders, and it's fun for her to have that family here with her. So who knows? They're feeling good. They're feeling the vibes. Keys to the match for San Diego Mojo involve the middles. We know that they're good at the pin. Yes, they're dominant, but it's the middles in transition not only serve receive but in transition keys to the match for the thrill spread the offense we love spreading an offense we love all attackers feeling that love from their setter so expect that from the thrill Vegas with five players with ten or more points in that reverse sweep a historic moment in Grand Rapids a week ago today so we get set the mojo on the right side and there's Newt Sara 22 and 23 spent in Athletes Unlimited, 16 years as a pro around Thailand, Azerbaijan, Turkey, Switzerland, Spain, you name it. Tom Gom has dominated the leagues there and San Diego's center will serve to start. It was rainy a little bit, but beautiful inside the Dollar Loan Center as an awkward touch leads to a popped over kill by Gabby Gonzalez and a bit of a uncharacteristic start to this one. Yeah, well, you know, feeling the flow there is the first point of the ball game, so anything goes, but with that, Cat Bell is now at the service line. Bell, the San Diego native, has certainly dominated against the side of her hometown as Vander Wy takes a big swing, and it's back to Gabby Gonzalez. The Oregon alum, and we're going to talk a lot of Ducks volleyball today. They're all over the court as Gonzalez gets off to a hop start. Gonzalez very steady on the outside for the thrill. She's steady in the serve-receive pass specifically, so watch out for that. Quick set over to Vanderweide, another Oregon alum. And a free ball given by Valeria Papa. You can tell the mojo did their recruiting, ready for Glass Childress, but once again, it's Cat Bell dominating. Right, it's being able to be locked in for those long extended rallies. Yes, the mojo were able to find a block there in that play, but it was a thrill being able to cover that and then earn in transition. Bell, who had 18 kills, just two errors at Grand Rapids, and now a back row attack called against Tomcom, who goes over the net as a back row setter, and the Vegas throw up just exploded here early up 4 nothing. Right, that pedal is on the metal for the thrill, and I do not expect them to let up. Bell continues this lengthy service run in a quick gap ball to Ali Bastianelli, the Illinois graduate making her first start in the PVF. 
And when in doubt, go to the right side. Bell has another kill. Bell attacking in the back row, as you can see on your screen. She has to take off behind that 10 foot line or three meter line, but she has a seam in that block and uses it to her advantage. Vegas with four aces against Grand Rapids, continuing to up the pressure as Temi Thomas Ilara's first swing gets a block touch. Right back to TTA. And Gabby Gonzalez with three early kills. Vegas up 6 nothing. Gonzalez is really good at using the block to her advantage. She hits high hands and trolls it time and time again. Timeout called by Coach Anif Park, and we'll take one with her as Vegas owning the home court advantage here on this Sunday afternoon. This is real pro volleyball. Have you seen the product that's out there? Have you seen the athletes? I'm I don't even know if there's words to explain how I'm feeling right now. I'm just so excited and grateful to be able to do this right now. Well, it's definitely really cool to be able to be playing professional volleyball. It's really cool to be able to be a part of the first year or something. No one takes for granted the opportunity that is here and present for us. Kids and people in general are really excited about pro volleyball. I think it's the first time that it's actually happening and that it's done very well. And your jersey, I hope. Is your coach okay with this? Yeah, no. Okay, good, good. <laughs> and that it's so accessible to everyone. I wish I had something like that. It's a really cool feeling to know that they have professional volleyball to come watch. It's about making an environment where you're happy to do what you're supposed to do. So that we build a, a journey and a path for future generations. She continues this six point service run. San Diego looking for their first points here this afternoon, and it's a give and go with Vander Wye, who dominates it off the shoulder of Kylie Murr, and just like that, coming out of the break, leave it to Taiba Hanif Park to draw one up. Right, they took that timeout to obviously stop that early run from the thrill, and they're able to find a first ball side out with it. Four matches with double digit kills for Vander Wye as. Our first slide this afternoon comes to Oblad is Tammy Thomas Ilara. She is certainly familiar with Kylie Murr digging her balls. The two of them have been dueling in the Big Ten for half a decade as Tammy Thomas gets the kill off a touch of the net. Right, she ran an inside route, so right now she's a right side attacker, but they had her run a quick ball, kind of like a back one there, so that was really fun to see from the San Diego Mojo. 20 kills on 51 swings in a five set loss for Temi Thomas Ilara. And Gabby Gonzalez playing with a chip on her shoulder was pulled halfway through the Grand Rapids match for Kenna Sauer. And it's Gonzalez's set here. Well, the Thrill has had a week at home to be able to, well, number one, rest, okay, because they've been on the road quite a bit. They've had a lot of games under them, their belt and a fast start with it. So it's been nice for the Thrill to be at home get a full week of practice, and then come out here this Sunday afternoon. You mentioned it, first home match in 20 days as Temi thomas Ilara goes with a soft touch off of Maddox's arm, and San Diego on a mini run. You know, at just six foot, she certainly plays a lot taller. She does, and she does that by getting her feet to the ball, that apex of the ball. She's able to reach high to it and get crafty with her hand-to-ball contact. Out of system and just out of bounds from Hannah Maddox, the South Alabama alum. Maddox has certainly been a focal point for this Vegas team. Seven matches with 10 or more kills and you see the strap on her left shoulder dealing with a bit of an injury. Glass Childress will feed her again. An opportunity for Tammy thomas Ilara. 
Oh, it looked like it could have been run down, but Hannah Maddox has that extra power. Cat Bell digging in there on defense, being able to take that jab set to her left-hand side, and then Glass Childress just setting that ball up for Maddox on the pin. Service error for Vegas. And, you know, we haven't really talked much about the Mojo Middles yet, but that was a touch by Ronica Stone. Allie Bastianelli making her first start, so no Hannah Tapp this afternoon thus far for San Diego. But Ronica Stone's a player that has explosive personalities on the court. 15 kills last weekend. Give and go for Maddox. Well, that was an awkward set from Tomcom. Great dig for Venegas. Might we have our first elongated rally here today? Bell goes long, and San Diego edges closer within two. A libero just buckling down as they do best, just stepping into that seam and lifting that ball. A really great job there, and the Mojo being able to win again another rally in transition. Strong topspin serve for Mylara. And Papa pulls it off the block. The Mojo on a run of 7-1 and within one. Papa, last time she was here in Vegas, she subbed in and played a crucial role. I mean, she has years of experience under her belt, and she's not shy of a double block. 25 kills in her two matches against the Thrill as Murr is fooled by the top of the net. Three ball opportunity for the Mojo, and it's a back row attack that is just wide from Vanderwey. Let's talk about Kylie Murr there on that serve receive pad. She was falling face forward and managed to get two hands on the ball and somehow lift it on her side of the net. Hey, keeping it funky and weird, but she got her team that point. Just touching that line. Ooh, they could have challenged it and won it, but Hanif Park elects to play it out, and a side out comes from Stone's one foot. And there you go, the middles for San Diego getting involved. As she was running behind there, she was able to take off on that one foot and find the seam in the thrills block. Remember, we have that bolt six challenge system where each coach has two challenges per set, and if you win it, you keep it. Good pick up by Tammy Thomas, I Laura, and it's Stone off balance. Vanderwide off two feet. We're tied. And just like that, a tied ball game. The Mojo being able to trickle back in here. They're finding ways in transition to score. The thrill on the other hand, looking for a first ball side out and pushing points at the service line. And a 9-3 run since the timeout called by Hanif Park. Valeria Papa continues her service run as Van Buskirk tips. And a free ball opportunity out of system for Murr. Rejected! Ronica Stone gives San Diego their first lead. Stone, a big crossover move here on the block. Look at her close that block. It's her right hand pressing into that seam. She got her eyes on the hitter and then pressed low over the net. That's a franchise player for San Diego. Stone and Tom Kong as Papa continues serving. Cat Bell from the left side trying to throw a wrinkle in and it works out. Bell saying, I've had enough of that. Let's side out and now push points. Still early on in this ball game, but look at Bell here swinging cross court into that 5-6 seam. Maddox with a power serve to Venegas. Stone splits the block, but who is there but Glass Childress? Vanderwide on a sharp cross swing in San Diego and Vegas going back and forth a seesaw matchup now. Vanderwide going thumbs down on that attack. She had one up and stayed true angle there. I'd like to see the thrill make an adjustment and block angle when the middle blocker runs behind. Right now there's a little bit of a gap in that block of the thrill. I'd like to see them feed it down the line to Murr. Quick set, and Van Busker has her first kill. And when Vegas can get the middles going, that was one of your keys. Exactly. We want to spread the love if we're the thrill, okay? We want to spread the love in our offense. 
They might be a little pin heavy time to time, but the middles are great for the thrill. So we want to see them active, not only in serve receive, but transition as well. And on the other side, first ball side outs have been smooth thus far for Lindsay Vanderweide. I mean, look at this rip right here as she goes high hands through that seam. Short serve from Nutsara Tomcom, and we are tied at 12. Best of five. After the second set, the teams will switch sides here at the Dollar Loan Center as Cat Bell serves to Venegas. Now Temi Thomas comes from the left. Says anything you can do, I can do better to Cat Bell. Right, going hard cross there, proving that there is always more angle. She had two up on that, but it was a fast arm swing to beat that block. Side outs are coming feverishly now. A slide opportunity. Oblad is dug. Soft touch. Oblad says not today. Oblad tracking that ball, ball setter, ball hitter, getting on her hitter. It's that right hand on the inside seam that throws it down. So a line drive serve from Gabby Gonzalez. Good opportunity from Papa, but in comes Murr. Straight down by Maddox. Maddox unloading on that ball and finding a seam in the block of the mojo. Straight down. Second kill for Hannah Maddox coming off of her second highest output of the season with 21 points as Temi Thomas Ilara continues this run of first ball side outs. Right, and we knew she was a well-oiled machine. We touched on it earlier. This is exactly how I expect her to show up every single night. Such a high-level athlete. What makes her high level is that she's steady. She is stable. Fourth kill for Temi Thomas Ilara. Maddox explodes it off the stone block, and Vegas able to get to 15 first. San Diego knew that they wanted to go out to Maddox there. She had two up, but how Maddox found success is that she kept her elbow high and attacked high hands. Oblad with the dig on Ilara. What a perfect set. Tomcom has eyes in the back of her head. She sure does. She has eyes everywhere. I don't even know. She sees that court so well. Her volley IQ is through the roof. But it's off one foot from Stone in transition. Now, Tomcom did not start in the first meeting here. It was a two-setter situation for San Diego, but now she is certainly the go-to. Stone off one foot, and the slide gives the mojo a 16-15 edge. Running behind off that one foot, Stone very well. The San Diego spreading the offense. She was able to see the block, was taking away angle, and then got that hand to ball down the line. A change up there from Temi Thomas. But all power, Cat Bell cannot get a touch, and San Diego has their first two-point lead here after a 6-0 start from Vegas. Right, Vegas looking to lock in serve receive right now. Class Childress, she's front row, meaning there is a front row setter for the throw. So there's two front row options, and she has two back row attacker options. And we go back to Glass Childress, going back to her home state of Michigan, going down two sets to none, two tight sets, 25-21, 25-21, and then Alicia got aggressive. Four kills, no errors in the first reverse sweep in PVF history. But there's not much of an answer there on Stone. Stone is on fire right now. She's seeing the ball really well in front of her when you have Tom come setting you. She's gonna find those windows in the block and Stone's doing a really great job of getting her feet to that ball and swinging away. Fifth kill for Veronica Stone. Bell goes cross court and matches her with her fifth. Still anybody's ball game early in this first set as we close it out, but Kat Bell, she's going to find a way to score. You know, something tells me we are in for a good one. This first set has gone back and forth. 
As Van Der Weide off the touch into the corner. And a key celebration, Valeria Papa has certainly struggled in the early goings today, but she is relieved with a good first touch. Right, it was high off the block. It was a great block touch from the thrill. Usually middle back would need to dig that ball. Oh, and a rare first touch overpass leads to Van Der Weide. Lofty set to Gonzalez, who got off to the red hot start today. Unable to keep up, and Lindsey Vanderweide now has six points to lead the way into a timeout here in this first set. The Mojo have turned the tides here on the thrill. We'll be right back. Women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we are only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. without a match here in Vegas. The fans have flocked to the Dollar Loan Center. We got a great crowd here today, Victoria. I'm telling you, the Vegas community rocks. They love their live events and they love their live sports. Got some VIPs in attendance too, we'll tell you about as the overpass is terminated by Gabby Gonzalez. Utilizing that timeout and looking to switch up this momentum is the thrill. When you have those overpasses, you gotta feast on them, especially at this level. Six points leads the way for Gonzalez and Vegas as Van Buskirk sends a deep serve to Papa. Oh my goodness, pinball effect. Still alive off Glass Childress, but Murr loses her footing. Pardon me, that's Maddox, and San Diego once again takes advantage of these long rallies. Right, the thrill needs to find a way to dig a ball in transition. I mean, when it's off your shoulder, go ahead, why not? But they need to be able to troll, control that ball in transition. First touches have been hard to come by, but the give and go for GG has Vegas back within two. Gonzalez again on that left side attack. Look at Gonzalez, she has two up on her, but her attack is so high, she's able to go through that block. Tammy Thomas, I Laura, tracked down by Maddox, but it just tails into that first row. So San Diego continuing to use the one-two punch of Vanderweide and Tammy Thomas, I Laura. Right, right now it's a first ball side out ball game. San Diego, they're able to find that rhythm, the thrill as well, looking for a first ball side out. Tight to the net, Class Childress gets a touch on it. Does that stay inside the antenna? Fans are clamoring. Murr is so agile, and again, it's Gonzalez. That ball might have gone up and over the antenna from my perspective, but who knows? The fans, they get involved here in Vegas, and they'll let you know their opinion right off the bat. But let's talk about that cover ball from Murph, keeping her team alive and then being able to score. Yeah. 
The combination of Demi Thomas Ilara, Lindsey Vanderweide, now with 12 points, six apiece, as San Diego two points away from taking this opening set. And a timeout is called by Fran Flory. We'll take one, two, as Flory looks to guide a comeback here late in the first. It's a St. Patrick's Day edition. Yeah, we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day for tonight. It is volleyball night. Chasse gets a chance. And she oh, doesn't miss. Yamadur gets it. Morgan hands for the job she's done keeping the four clean and a big block. Oh no! Point Atlanta. That block landed just out of bounds. Bell and the Vegas thrill come back to life. Looking like a baddie, I show up and make them stop. Wanna know my name so badly, cause I run this whole block. Gear up with the official pro collection apparel today. Available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyballshop.com. NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we're only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. in the professional career of Ali Bastianelli. From Michigan, went to Illinois. You know, certainly one of the players to watch, said Fran Flory this week, as Bastianelli serves here up three. A must side out opportunity, and our first net violation of the match gets a side out, and we may see a challenge here from Coach Haimith Park. As Veronica Stone and Temi thomas Ilar are asking the two-time silver medalist to pull the card. And there's the former United States assistant coach. This would be a big momentum swing for the thrill if they're able to get that Call there on the net violation. Bringing them now within four points of the ball game. So at this point in the game, it's the home stretch of the last five points, right? So it's how do we lock it in on our side? It's minimizing the unforced errors, finding ways to score in transition. And what we're doing here is, along with our head referee, waiting for the Bolt 6 system to hit us with the replay, both coaches with two challenges per set. Taiba Hanif Park, if she wins this, gets it back, but this late in the set, now let's take a look. See that pinky? It does, that is a net touch, yes. Pinky just got that tape and it is moving after contact. Great eye from the refing staff. So the mojo down to just one challenge, but we are sitting in the final moments of this first set as Berkeley Oblad, the Henderson native, looks to put together a service run. Chance for Maddox. Venegas from her knees. And Papa gives the mojo three set points. Papa letting us know exactly how she felt about that last call, bringing her team to set point. And well in there, Papa, who has spent 18 years as a pro from Italy to Germany and mentioned at 18 kills at home in this five-set matchup last month as Vegas saved by Papa. The point's still alive. And Papa tools the block to celebrate on her backside. And San Diego takes the first set in come from behind fashion. Come from behind and finding a way to close out. How they did that as well, they got their middles involved and they pushed points at that service line. We'll come More. back with the second set next.
NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we're only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. Oh, an exhilarating first set as San Diego trailed 6-0, came from behind to win our opening set, and we are so happy to be joined with the Pro Volleyball Federation CEO and Jen Spiker. And, well, Jen, first off, historic moment last week in Grand Rapids. The first reverse sweep, the first setter to be named Player of the Week. What did you see? I mean, Michigan is the grassroots of this league. Well, I live in Michigan. Of yep. course it is. Um, so, yeah, that was great. I was at the game. Alicia was absolutely amazing. Um, she really brought it that night. I think Kathy George was a little bit stunned, but the first re reverse sweep was sweet. It was very fun to see. Okay, I want to dive into the nitty-gritty. What does it mean for professional sports in America to have this first pro league? Oh, it's just, I mean, look at the attendance. Look at the fans. Look at the YouTube people. People are screaming about it. They're loving it. It's been amazing. We, as a league, couldn't have wished for anything better. And, uh, you know, look out, because year two is even better. I was going to say, okay, we're halfway through. People are already talking about next season, what's going to happen. Are there any kind of like tidbits that you can, you know, feed the fans? Sure. So, you know, there's three more teams next year, Indy, Kansas City, and Dallas. And I can tell you on Tuesday, there'll be a very interesting announcement. Okay. Very interesting announcement okay. on Tuesday. All right. Well, we look forward to You might want to get your money up to buy some tickets. Okay. Absolutely. Ooh. Well, let's talk about the fans. I mean, America, they're thirsty for professional volleyball. We've seen it. At the collegiate level, now we're seeing it at the pro level. What does it mean to see all the fans and the support that the league has gotten? Well, it just tells you how long this is overdue. It's just so overdue. Um, these women, these athletes are just absolutely phenomenal. I'm sitting courtside and I'm stunned by how, you know, tall, they're, tall they are, but more how powerful they are, how strong they are, how, how together they're, you know, enjoying the sport. It's just been amazing. Well, overwhelming support from Bolt 6 as well. We got a replay quickly there, a challenge or two in that first set. And then the compensation announcement, a million dollars to the winning team, three to 15,000 for these individual awards. What has been the response from the front office that you guys have seen throughout the year? Well, it's been amazing. And as you can tell right now, I'm fielding a gazillion calls from international players. We just announced our salary increases for 2025. The one player is going to make up to 175,000. Two players at 120. You know, four players at 75. That's a 25% increase. What does that tell you about this league? It's succeeding. We're joined by the Pro Volleyball Federation CEO, Jen Spiker. And, you know, you mentioned you're from Michigan. You live in Michigan. Michigan has certainly been, along with Columbus, kind of the focal point of this league spreading out. But now that we've seen Atlanta take first place, Vegas and San Diego get so much run. The spread of the league next season, what's the goal of Pro Volleyball Federation here over the next five years? Well, to keep the, comp the parity of the league very high, which I think it is, on any given night, anybody can beat anybody. Look at what Columbus did earlier, you know, to, to Atlanta this afternoon. Um, you know, we expect, you know, maybe 14, 16 over five years. You know, we don't want to grow too fast, um, but we want to be competitive and, and bring the highest level of quality volleyball for these female athletes that we can to the United States of America. And it's high quality at that, and you're definitely no stranger to the game of volleyball. You won high school state. Yep, yep. state champions, mm -hmm. yep, yep. Yep, played in college, uh, coached my daughter for the last eight years, and now I'm doing this, and it's been absolutely amazing. It really is. And let's talk a little bit about the community of volleyball. I mean, it's such a fun community to be a part of, and it really has been shining through. Oh, yeah. The volleyball community is so um, supportive of each other, right? Like, I mean, watch these girls that, you know, one night they start, the next night they don't. 
They're so into their teammates, and they're so, um, you know, the story that of Tori Dilfer and Marley Monster is that happened a couple of uh, weeks ago about how Marley almost cried in a press conference because her teammate was so supportive of her, even though she took her spot. Um, it's just, it's truly what these women are all about. It's truly what volleyball is all about. And a reminder, there will be seven matches aired nationally on CBS Sports Network, and then you have the 14 championship. I'd love to know, and I think the fans want to know too, a little bit more details about the championship and how it'll all run down. It'll be hosted by the higher seeds. Is that details that are still going to be wrinkled out? That's here? something you need to know about Tuesday. Oh, okay. So Tuesday's the big announcement. Jen Spiker with us. We thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Heather. Thanks so much. Thank you. So we get back to the action, and it has been a tight set in that as San Diego unable to play any defense there on Lane Van Buskirk. And Victoria, I'll tell you what, the league is in great hands. I'm very excited to see what this announcement on Tuesday is. Something tells me that there may be a sight set for this final four that they've got. That's gonna I be know. my guess. Let the rumors and gossip, you know, troil and boil. I mean, now we're all on the edge of our seats. We're all thirsty. We're ready for that Taco Tuesday. <laughs> San Diego able to side out with ease. That's something they've been able to do all afternoon long. Starting after that timeout called, and that's something I don't think we give enough credits to these PVF coaches. Down six nothing, clearly coach Anif Park inspired her team in some way or added some sort of wrinkle. Right, and using those timeouts and challenges, challenges in my opinion, they could kind of be used as a timeout call too. If you need to slow down momentum on the other side of the net, you can use it. And for me, I'd love to see a stat for every time a coach calls a timeout. Do they earn that point? I'm thinking over 70%, right? Because usually you're on defense, you want that first ball side out. And here's another instance of first ball side outs working as Gonzalez nears 10 points. Tony Thomas from the back row, handled by Bell. What a dig by Venegas. One of the more underrated bros in the league. For a team in San Diego that just is starting to get the rhythm going as the tool block pulls Vegas even here in the second set. Right, well, we're even because both teams are playing disciplined defense. Pay attention to the blockers at the net and their eye work. They're tracking the ball so well. Nisara Tomcom, international standout setter for the Mojo. Goes back to Bastianelli. She's blocked. It is saved, though. Tammy Thomas and Tom Com are there. In transition, that's where Oblad thrives. We love the middle in transition, and Oblad, look at her go. She worked hard to get off that net, step close to that ball. It was a gap set, meaning that it was led a little bit in front of the setter. She was able to turn that ball back to area one. Second kill on seven swings for Berkeley Oblad and Lane Van Buskirk to serve. I think that's my favorite wrinkle to this league. The bros don't serve. Both middles have to serve for themselves. That really separates the good from the great as Vander Weida connects with Bastianelli and we're tied again. Great block there. Take a look at this replay. Being able to get two blockers up on that big attack. Bell. Papa's defense has led the way. She had the set winning kill as well. And Temi Thomas I Laura gives the mojo the lead again. She's so good with her hand to ball contact. It's a big double arm lift from her when she's attacking that ball. But what makes her so unique as an athlete is that 0.01 second. She's able to change her wrist on the ball. A bit out of system. So Bell has to send over a free ball. I don't think Temi Thomas was ready for that. about Oblad with the set? Everybody getting involved in this point. Again, the middle sets Gonzalez. Tammy Thomas, is there a touch? No touch is the call. 
That is a smart move from the block by the thrill. It's really easy on high balls like that to reach up as a blocker, and now you're a target. But the thrill block, they were disciplined. They were able to just press low, and with that, that ball going up and over the block and out. And our first substitute, a serving sub, as Saskia Hippe comes in, the German standout server. Looking to put together a run. That looked in, and it was in, as Kylie Murr let it go. Here's our quick bolt six look. Just tagging the outside of those lines. The entire arena gets a look at that replay as well. As Oblad on the slide, picked up by Vanderweide, dominated by Gonzalez. Gabby Gonzalez gets to 10 first. Good work applying that offensive pressure back on that slide attack. Glass Childress spreading her offense. Oblad getting on her out, forcing that overpass, and then taking care of it. So the 10th kill for Gonzalez is the 10th point for Vegas. As Tammy Thomas Ilara working her way there too. That's point number nine for her. Thomas Ilara, when they're in serve receive right now, she likes running an inside set. We can see her running maybe a rip ball or an X. It depends to each their own. Everybody names it different per club and per team. But pay attention in serve receive. She likes to run that inside inside ball. And the first ace today comes for the rookie, Ali Bastianelli, and it's her second ace of the season. Both have come against Vegas. That float serve was dancing quite a bit. She was able to toss that ball onto her right shoulder and just hit it flat. Joust, usually won by the setter as it was again. The Payne back row D. Maddox <laughs> tried to be kicked there. And luckily, Papa's all right. Glass Childress winning that joust and then allowing her team to score in transition with Maddox putting that ball away, thumbs down. All smiles there as Papa's targeted. Gabby Gonzalez has really been everywhere. 10 kills and five digs. Now a set over to Maddox. Covered by Stone. Oh, that looked like a double from Gonzalez, but there's no call. Stone cleans it up nevertheless. Interesting choice by Gonzalez to set the D ball instead of the outside. I like her mixing it up though, why not? But it's a slide from Stone. Pardon me, back one by Stone. She's really good off of one foot. And Tammy Thomas Ilara has ditched the topspin serve. The flat one doesn't work too well on a first ball side out for the thrill. Vegas playing catch up in the second set. Right, a one point ball game. They're able to earn two points here at the service line. They'll be in a good position. Alicia Glass Childress. At 57 assists, 14 digs, a couple kills the last time these two teams met. That block forcing Stone to have to reach around it on that attack. And in that process, that ball went long. Last Childress, who won bronze in 2016, has played all around the world with plenty of experience, and San Diego is going to challenge this, wanting a touch at the net. So this play is officially under review. I like the way that they've adopted the Soccer VAR logo, meaning they are going to go to review, showing the, the rectangle. I like it too, that's fun. Maybe touching on a little bit of Ted Lasso. <laughs> there you go. Taiba Hanif Park, who actually stepped away from volleyball for a little bit. She was the director of admin at UC Irvine. Your alma mater. My alma mater. basketball though for Hanif Park. Yep, yep, I played there for five years as an outside Hitter. It was good fun uh, competing in the Big West Conference. Always fun on the road as well, playing at Hawaii, Long Beach State. Santa Barbara was always a battle. All right, give me your 
Best look. Hold on a second. We're seeing no block touch. They gave the point to the thrill. So San Diego again loses a challenge down to just one here in the second set. That was as close as it gets. Pop up down the line and the mojo trailed for just a moment. This bolt six action is no joke. And it's tough to, uh, to argue with those cameras. Hippe's first swing is stuck, and the mojo will take us into a break. A tight second set followed a tight first, and we'll see how this comes to a close. This is a real pro volleyball. Have you seen the product that's out there? Have you seen the athletes? I, I don't even know if they're worth to explain how I'm feeling right now. I'm just so excited and grateful to be able to do this right now. Well, it's definitely really cool to be able to be playing professional volleyball really cool to be able to be a part of the first year or something. No one takes for granted the opportunity that is here and present for us. Kids and people in general are really excited about pro volleyball. I think it's the first time that it's actually happening and that it's done very well. And your jersey, I hope, is your coach okay with this? Yeah, no. Okay, so good. <laughs> and that it's so accessible to everyone. I wish I had something like that. It's a really cool feeling to know that they have professional volleyball to come watch. It's about making an environment where you're happy to do what you're supposed to do. So that we build a, a journey and a path for future generations. staff for San Diego, led of course by Taiba Hanif Park, but Dietra Collins Parker, who actually spent eight years here as the head coach of UNLV, was conference coach of the year back in 1998. Also Brandon Directo, who we chatted with a little bit before the match. Yeah, I've known Directo for quite some time. We were in the same OC volley scene when I was playing at UCI, and it was a fun beach volleyball community there in Huntington Beach, so, so fun to see him on staff here for San Diego. So Hannah Maddox will be subbed out here for Kenna Sauer. Started her career at Texas Tech, ended it last season at Houston, and while well, Sauer came off the bench and was pivotal last week in the reverse sweep. It's so important to be able to have depth on the bench, and it is also very difficult to come in off the bench and make an impact. However, it is a quick side out per usual on a perfect tip. So Veronica Stone will go back to serve. Let's take another look. Great court vision from Stone. She was able to see defense was dug in on her. That last second contact on the ball. That was kept up, but only for a moment. If you remember the viral videos and pictures that came out the last time these two teams met here in Vegas, Ronica Stone, of course, dating the Green Bay Packers quarterback, Jordan Love, who came and showed face and showed support. And today we've got a couple more uh, VIPs around. We talked to Jen Spiker. You talked a little bit about the backup setter for the San Diego Mojo and Kylie Cole and her husband, the punter for the Raiders, AJ Cole. Yeah, they're sitting court side here and it's nothing but a family affair. We can see Cole right there on the right hand side of the screen. Out here supporting wifey. Kylie was added to the Mojo midway through the season as we've seen player personnel change. I think as the years go on, we're gonna see a ton of trading. Something that we saw with Tori Dilfer uh, Stringer making the move up north from Atlanta and Cole who was added from waivers 
to add setter depth for the mojo. She played for NC State and Arizona State as a net violation plagues the thrill. The mojo take a one point lead here. Yeah, and I think it's gonna be really interesting to see how trading comes into effect for these athletes. We see it a lot with the MLB, right? With a lot of trades happening. I mean, talk about baseball's its whole own beast, but it'll be interesting to see, you know, who is going to be traded, why they're going to be traded. Injuries do play in effect. We never like to see it, but sometimes they do. And there's Cole after Oblad slide evens us at 18, and we're getting into that red zone, crunch territory. The terms differ based off the coach you talk to, but when you get close to 20, the pressure ratchets is up, and Papa gives the mojo another side out. Papa popping that ball for a side out, running that inside rip set. Why you usually see teams running that rip set inside, it shortens the distance between the attacker and the setter, allowing for a faster swing and faster kill. Seventh point for Papa as the serve goes long. And we've got a race to six here to finish this second set as Fran Flory, the national champion, as a student athlete at Texas, got to see her Longhorns bring home another title this year in Tampa. Ilara, deep corner, and that was picked perfectly. Right, it was a finesse shot. Placement, not power. High level volleyball IQ. Look at her establish where the set is. She held her hand there. You can see her snap on that ball finish it to that corner. A reminder, we will have about a 10 minute intermission after this set. Victoria will catch up with one of the coaches as a quick timeout is called by Vegas. Their defense falling apart a bit. We'll see if they can gather and come back here to finish this second set. Thrill because one of their best players is also one of the best players in the world. We get a chance to see Alicia Glass Childress laser that goes over. Alicia Glass Childress helps get that nice Vegas looking for their first set of the day. They've got it for Grand Rapids. Glass Childers with a sneak attack. Tower, Glass Childers, Bell. And the Vegas Thrill come back to life, winning each of the last three sets. Just out of bounds. Bell and the Vegas thrill come back to life. Looking like a baddie, I show up and make them stop. Wanna know my name so badly, cause I run this whole block. Gear up with the official Pro Collection apparel today. Available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyballshop.com. Inside this beautiful, semi-new facility here in Henderson, built March 2022. And an incredible 18 months it took. That is as quick of an arena building that you will see the $84 million project here at the Dollar Loan Center. Alongside Victoria Dennis, I'm Daniel Gilman as the back row attack hits the line and Hippe has her first point. Hippe, at the beginning of the season for the thrill was really lethal and the thrill have been able to rely on her day in and day out. And every time she steps on the court, she truly makes a difference. Targeting Kenna Sauer there in left front, and she was in the net. Sauer, who came on, picked up the set winning kill in three and four in Grand Rapids. But once again, Vegas looking to come from behind, and there's Kenna Sauer out of Ankeny, Iowa. Glass Childress will feed her for the first time. Set 
works. They don't always have to be lofty sets to the middle. Great lifted pass from Hippe, utilizing that free ball, and then Glass Children finding her middle. It's kind of like tip to that campfire. Kind of like the second uh, rotation for this team. Their shift, Hippe and Sauer come off the bench and look to provide a spark, but no one is stopping Tammy Thomas Ilara, her 12th point. Point for point action, high level volleyball. Teams are going to earn points, right? These are high level athletes, and you can expect them to keep making these plays. Stone serves. Beating a side out here, the hosts, and they will get one. Van Buskirk finds the line. Van Buskirk, it was tied to the net, but she found a way to score. Let's talk about Glass Childress on that dig, running all the way across the court, setting a middle on her knees. So VB will serve now. Vegas with a key opportunity here to tie it, but it's out of system and a free ball. Venegas is there to stifle the crowd for the time being. Class Childress chooses Hippe and she's roofed. Bastianelli can celebrate as the Mojo have a pair of set points. The Mojo diving in on that block. Take a look here as it's a big crossover play. That set low and inside. And the Mojo were able to take advantage. Tom Com to serve, and it is a lollipop. Giving Hippe all the opportunities there, and she'll go line. What I love about Blast Childress setting is that she goes back to her attackers after an unforced error. What that does is establish confidence between you and your teammate, and establish confidence in your attacker. Hippe, the best server on the team. Vegas needing to play D to keep the set alive. And once again, Temi thomas Ilara strikes the mojo. Grooving their way into intermission, leading two sets to none. She started her career at Northwestern, bumped herself up to Wisconsin, and now making a home in San Diego. We will come right back with our intermission report. This is a real pro volleyball. Have you seen the product that's out there? Have you seen the athletes? I'm I don't even know if there's words to explain how I'm feeling right now. I'm just so excited and grateful to be able to do this right now. Well, it's definitely really cool to be able to be playing professional volleyball. It's really cool to be able to be a part of the first year or something. No one takes for granted the opportunity that is here and present for us. Kids and people in general are really excited about pro volleyball. I think it's the first time that it's actually happening and that it's done very well. And your jersey, I hope. Is your coach okay with this? Yeah, no. Okay, so good. <laughs> and that it's so accessible to everyone. I wish I had something like that. It's a really cool feeling to know that they have professional volleyball to come watch. It's about making an environment where you're happy to do what you're supposed to do. So that we build a, a journey and a path for future generations. Enjoying the sights, sounds, and culture of the Hawaiian Ninth Island Night here at the Dollar Loan Center. Victoria caught up with the San Diego head coach, Taiba Hanif Park. Been the main focus in the gym right now at practice. I think a lot of blocking. 
defense. And I think it's showing out here. We're getting some really good touches on the block. I think we're playing effective defense that's allowing us to run our middles this time. And what are you looking to continue over here in the third set? We know that Vegas has been in this position before, down two and come back. And so we're looking to come out and just finish strong. Continue to work on our middles and have good block of defense. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. set coming up in a little bit and you heard it from coach Anif Park everybody knows that Vegas can come back the question is will they do it again stick with us here on this Sunday thrill because one of their best players is also one of the best players in the world we get a chance to see Alicia Glass Childress laser that goes over Alicia Glass Childress helps get that nice Vegas looking for their first set of the day they've got it for Grand Rapids Glass Childers with a sneak attack. Sour Glass Childers, Bell. And the Vegas Thrill come back to life, winning each of the last three sets. It's a St. Patrick's Day edition. Yeah, we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day for tonight. It is volleyball night. Chasse gets a chance. And oh, she does it miss. Mamadour gets it. Good Morgan Hans, what a job she's done keeping the four clean and a big block. Oh no! Point Atlanta. That block landed just out of bounds. Bell and the Vegas Thrill come back to life. Pro Collection Apparel today. Available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyballshop.com. nothing as we welcome you back here inside the dollar loan center and we take a look at these stats victoria and it's clear that the mojo has something cooking on offense they sure do well we talked about getting their middles involved and that's what they're doing right now we heard from coach earlier they're currently hitting 326 on the ball game they're finding ways to score in transition right now the thrill two more digs than the mojo but they got to put those digs away we welcome you here courtside well what does it need to take to put together a reverse sweep? It's something that obviously we've had almost 50 matches around the league and just one time have these professionals seen a 2-0 lead evaporate. Well, don't put it past the thrill to do it again. Back-to-back -back ball games. They did it on the road. Why not do it at home? They vibe off of the Vegas community. We've seen them do it. They have a deep bench. I believe that they have the opportunity and the skill set for that reverse sweep yet again. Victoria, I think the fans at home want to know this. What if you had to decide? How can you defend Temi thomas Silara as we take a look at some of her key plays today? 13 points on 12 kills. Right. Well, it's hard to defend an athlete like her. I mean, she is, when she is on, she is on. She gets her feet to that ball. It's great hand to ball contact. We saw there in that last swing, her court vision. And when you're vibing, you're feeling that mojo. She's feeling that mojo tonight. She's tunnel vision, and it looks good. Gabby Gonzalez, 10 kills, leads the way for the thrill, and we are just moments away from finding out what the third set has to offer for us. Stick with us here on this Sunday matchup of West Coast Sides. This is a real pro volleyball. Have you seen the product that's out there? Have you seen the athletes? I don't even know if there's words to explain how I'm feeling right now. I'm just so excited and grateful to be able to do this right now. It's definitely really cool to be able to be playing professional volleyball. It's really cool to be able to be a part of the first year of something. No one takes for granted the opportunity that is here and present for us. 
kids and people in general are really excited about pro volleyball. I think it's the first time that it's actually happening and that it's done very well. And your jersey, I hope, is your coach okay with this? Yeah, no, Okay, good, good. <laughs> and that it's so accessible to everyone. I wish I had something like that. It's a really cool feeling to know that they have professional volleyball to come watch. It's about making an environment where you're happy to do what you're supposed to do. So that we build a, a journey and a path for future generations. NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we are only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. Baby, I'm a big deal. I got it like that. I did it again. Who told you that I was finished? Fresh off the plane with a new money buddy. My hair stay late. Matt Ulmer's got to be happy watching this broadcast. The Oregon head coach, we talked about it. Taiba Hanif Park was the assistant coach two years ago. I think I saw Brooke Nunneviller in attendance, the Omaha Supernova star. And Well, here's our numbers on how many Oregon athletes are on the court here today. Yeah, well, it's five for the mojo and two for the thrill, and it's fun to see an ex-Pac-12 team be represented here in the PVF. And how fun is it that these athletes, they competed at the collegiate level together and now they're competing at a professional level in their backyard in the US of A. And if you count the 2024 conference alignment, 90% of the players here are in the Big Ten. You know, we talked all about the Big Ten talent, Oregon, UCLA, USC, Washington all making the move to the power conference of volleyball, but it has been Texas and the Big 12 that has hoisted the trophy the past two seasons as Cat Bell's alma mater, of course, Fran Flory as well. And talking about Big Ten, Temi thomas Ilara has made the circuit around the Big Ten from Northwestern to Wisconsin. Yeah, and it'll be interesting talking a little bit about NCAA volleyball with, you know, the big dogs at the top, they're feasting that those the Big Ten, the Big 12, the ACC. It'll be interesting to see those mid-level NCAA teams where they fall. As we get started here in this third and pivotal set, Saskia Hippe gets the start on the right side, and it is her swing that cleaned up by Berkeley Oblad. Vegas led 6-0 to start the first set. They get off to a hot start here after the intermission. A hot start with some hot music there during that first play. I mean, why not? Hey, the G League plays with music in here. Why not? It's very true. This facility plays home to got the Big West Basketball Championship here two weeks ago. And of course, all of the Vegas Thrill home matches, including just a few days away, Tuesday, Grand Rapids will come right back here to Vegas to rematch just 10 days separated from the reverse sweep. It's 7 o'clock. So Temi Thomas, Ilara, and the Mojo switching sides for the first time, but she certainly is not going to let that handicap her a clean swing from the right side. Pulling the block, Gonzalez, her hands, and then maybe she was thinking she was going to get tooled. In system from Gonzalez, a slide comes, and Oblad is stuffed. Bastianelli making well worth of her first start. I like Oblad though on that slide attack. Mojo's block is locked in right now, so how do you adapt when a block is locked in against your offense? It's being able to keep that ball high and move it around the court. I mean, right on cue, another Mojo block. And that's Temi Thomas Ilara's solo stuff, her third of the match, 16th point. Points are hard to come by here for Vegas as the Mojo cruising. 
Great cover by Ash Childress. Papa stretches the lead to four. Mojo coming off of a five set loss. They have not played in 13 days since the Orlando Valkyries took them to five and one. But you talk about rest, Victoria, it certainly has helped these Mojo players as Hippe is able to tool the block. Victoria unable to pick up that uh, that assist there as it came crashing towards us. I, I know, right? We're in the splash <laughs> zone over here. That ball got, got our way. But it was fun. Got it. Hands on the game ball, why you know, not? You've Put got me in, coach, I'm ready. <laughs> you've got your super fans right here. I'm surprised they're not <laughs> your bodyguards. <laughs> the Victoria Dennis cheering section here in Vegas <laughs> as San Diego stretches the lead to four. Where are you seeing success coming from the mojo here? Well, they're spreading their offense and they're keeping the Thrills defense guessing right now at this point. I mean, we knew that the Mojo, they were pretty pin heavy previously, but they've been able to find success there in the middle. Oblad off one foot, double ricocheted off of Glass Childress. No call. But again, it's Papa's power off that right arm and the Mojo gets a seven here in the first nine points of the set. And you know, you talked about it with Coach Hanif Park as Glass Childress gets pulled for Hannah Bukas, another Oregon graduate. But I think everyone on the Mojo know that these Vegas players feel like they can come back after they've done it. So you feel like the pressure has ratcheted up a notch for the Mojo knowing they can come back. Right, exactly. And having that chip on your shoulder or that thought in the back of your mind, you know, it keeps you going. And I think right now that the thrill, they need to lean on that. They need to take a deep breath on their side, find their rhythm, trust their side, and just focus on what's happening on their side of the court. Right now, the mojo, they're making defensive plays, they're finding ways to score in transition, but what can we control on our side is what you need to think as an athlete out, out there. Mojo defense has just been annihilating. And it quickly turns into a transition shutdown by Stone as Vegas calls a timeout here at 9-2 in the third set. We're gonna step away and have a special guest for you when we come back here from Vegas on this Sunday. <laughs> This is Real Pro Volleyball. Have you seen the product that's out there? Have you seen the athletes? I'm, I don't even know if there's words to explain how I'm feeling right now. I'm just so excited and grateful to be able to do this right now. Well, it's definitely really cool to be able to be playing professional volleyball. It's really cool to be able to be a part of the first year or something. No one takes for granted the opportunity that is here and present for us. Kids and people in general are really excited about the volleyball. I think it's the first time that it's actually happening and that it's done very well. And your jersey, I hope. Is your coach okay with this? Yeah, no, okay, so good. <laughs> and that it's so accessible to everyone. I wish I had something like that. It's a really cool feeling to know that they have professional volleyball to come watch. It's about making an environment where you're happy to do what you're supposed to do. So that we build a, a journey and a path for future generations. the CEO of USA Volleyball, Jamie Davis. Thanks so much for chatting with us. It's been a busy day, but I do want to ask you, in terms of seeing the growth of this Pro Volleyball Federation, what's been your first and second impressions throughout the last couple months? You know, it's been so much fun. I love, you come into it and you never know what you're going to expect in a first season, right? And when you see crowds like this, and not just crowds that are here, crowds that know volleyball and are enjoying volleyball, 
the excitement's great, and that's what's gonna just help this thing continue to grow. And we see it a lot in the youth community, right? That excitement of volleyball. Number one youth sport in America, 400,000 kids are playing. Yep. Uh, there's the Red Rocks tournament happening right now in Vegas. And um, let's kind of just touch on how the youth sport has just flourished in the U.S. and now these young athletes have these professionals to look up to. Well, that's what's so exciting is, as you mentioned, we're the number one sport in high school, we're the number one sport in college, and the youth, we're just growing. We were up 10% in membership last year, and historically, we would grow one or two percent a year. We're well above at the record numbers, well above pre-COVID numbers as well. I spent most of the day over at the Red Rock tournament that you were mentioning earlier. And what's really fun is now I'm looking in this crowd and I'm seeing a bunch of the girls who were playing over there here are now cheering on it. And that's what's so great about having pro volleyball here in the United States for the first time really to be able to see that and be able to do it. What has been the biggest testament to see that percentage in growth? Is it exposure on national television from NCAA? Is it now having this pro league here in America and the marketing from it? What has really been the biggest difference? You know, I think it's a lot. I think it's all of it, to be honest with you. I think that what happens is when people try it, we find that they love it. And so what we've really concentrated a lot on at USA Volleyball is try volleyball. And in fact, we have a big summer this week, this summer with the Paris Olympic and Paralympic Games, right? And we're working on a campaign right now concentrated on post-match, uh, post-Olympics and Paralympics to be able to do a whole try volleyball day, which we're gonna do in September across our 40 regions to get people who've never tried our sport but have seen how unbelievable it is in Paris and get them to wanna be out there on the court and we know that's gonna be another big spike. Talking about Paris, every four years, for indoor volleyball and beach volleyball, it's always either number one or number two most watched for at the Olympics. And then the track record has been, well, then we don't see it for another four years, but then it's the number one or two most watched sporting event at the Olympics. But now it's building and we're building off of that. And it'll be very exciting to see it after 2024 Paris. Well, that's the whole purpose of this Tri Volleyball Day idea is how do we keep that momentum going? You're absolutely right. Every four years, we get this platform that is just untouchable that you can have. And you're right, number one or number two rated uh, sport that happens within the Olympic and Paralympic Games. And then this happens, and we've been playing well, too. I mean, getting three golds in Tokyo worked out pretty well. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty bullish on hopefully what, how we're positioned to do this summer as well. Joined now by the CEO of USA Volleyball, Jamie Davis. And Jamie, I was on the call for the Triple Crown NIT tournament over in Kansas City, and I know all of the buzz since then has been about getting rid of the double in the college side of things. What has been your opinion of it and how that's kind of moved on into the lower levels? You know, it's interesting. I don't really have an opinion on it necessarily, and I just, the, the sport is evolving, and, and everyone's playing with a little bit of different rules and everything else like that as well, so it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. It will be, and it, it's fun to hear that dialogue within the fans and even at a younger level. And it'll be interesting to see, and in your opinion, do you see that double rule right now? It's only applicable to NCAA women's volleyball. Do you see it trickling down to the men's side or beach side or international? You know, it's very interesting. It's, the substitution rule and everything else that happens here in the United States with women's volleyball is different than we play at the international level. And some people have said that's actually been a challenge for USA because other countries don't play with that rule. So the youth all come up and they're playing the that we play at the international level, whereas at NCAA, we have different. So because of that, a lot of times our women who play front row and then have to play back row in all six positions in the international game haven't necessarily been trained and, and come up through that. So I'm really hoping mostly for an alignment because I think if we can get that alignment at the NCAA, the youth, and then hopefully at the international level, it's gonna be really, really good for international play and for Team USA. Meanwhile, Glass Childress has re-entered as the Vegas setter and she seems to find the rhythm as Van Buskirk with a key kill, but Vegas' lead that was early in the first set has been long gone here. The Mojo lead two sets to none and after that service error, it is now a 10 point deficit. One more question for you here. Jamie Davis, the CEO of USA Volleyball. Where do you see, in a best case scenario, the future of pro volleyball in America going? Because obviously there's gonna be more leagues. Where do you see, do you see the ability for multiple leagues to stay consistent or will it eventually all kind of lead to one avenue? You know, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that 
they all succeed. I mean, that's what we really want. I want as much exposure for this sport in this country so that every youth and, and adults, frankly, can see them, see their heroes being able to play, right? So the more the merrier, if you will. It'll, time will tell. I mean, as you said, Athletes Unlimited started three years ago. They're now having completed season three, the longest running historically women's professional league in the United States history at year three. Um, this is obviously just a couple months in here on PBF, and in literally 10 months' time, we know that League One Volleyball is going to be kicking off as well. I'd like to see them all. Time will tell, though, to see whether the market can handle three full professional leagues or not. Well, I'm hopeful. Yeah. I'm seeing it glass half full and maybe all the way full. Absolutely. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Absolutely. Jamie Davis, thank the you. CEO of USA Volleyball, mm -hmm. as Berkeley Oblad is able to keep the Vegas fans engaged. But once again, San Diego's side out ability has been phenomenal. It is their highest side out percentage this season by a large margin here thus far. And right on cue, Vegas is able to side out right back and pull within 10. Abby Gonzalez, who had that blazing hot first set, has pulled down a bit here, and we still have not seen Cat Bell re-enter for Vegas. Not sure we will see her again, as Bell has the warm-up outfit on over to our left. As Bastianelli serves the mojo, living up to their name here, a team that has just two wins this season. But well on their way to a blowout victory on this Sunday afternoon. However, Vegas, they've got something to say about it. It's got to come here from Oblad's service run. Tammy Thomas on Laura. Forces the overpass. And Glass Childress cannot direct that in. So the termination successful off the block. And that's just a perfect analogy of how this Match is gone for the Mojo. 19 points for Ilara, 13 for Stone. And an ace, no, they call it out. But we may see a challenge here from San Diego. Let's see what the Bolt 6 says. And Hanif Park will hold on to her challenge. Twenty-one to ten. Hey, we got Victoria back. Hello. Okay. Hippe goes strong cross court. The thriller back within ten. Hippe always lethal on the right side. What she does so well, she's able to see that block out in front of her and tag that sideline. Stone, however, and we talk about first ball side outs. I mentioned it earlier, San Diego has to be siding out at their best mark of the year. They really do. I mean, this is the best I've seen them play. I've watched their games uh, on TV when they've been on the road. And of course, they played here previously. But for me, this really has been the best ball game that they've played this season. A disguise set. Headed towards Gonzalez, and once again, the Mojo have been able to keep most of the swings off the court here today, especially in this third dominant set as Papa goes for it all and misses Long. I'll tell you what, nobody has more fun than Valeria Papa. She has entertained us this entire afternoon. She really does, and she has that smile on her face. She knows how to get her team going and the crowd as well, just having some good old fun. Perfect set out of system. Vander Weidel wants a touch, realizes the score, and says, ah, oh, you don't have to challenge it. Oh, but nevertheless, San Diego will click the button on the tablet, and this play is under review. Right now, the Mojo batting 440. Woo. Just being able to have a extremely high kill percentage as a team. When you're putting almost half of those balls away as a unit, it's pretty impressive. 
Meanwhile, let's talk about the big picture because Atlanta lost today. So with the Vegas loss, if it does hold here, they'll fall to about four, four and a half matches back of first place. But the idea is to get into the top four. And we know that on Tuesday, there will be a big announcement about the semifinals that will set up the million dollar championship match. And here's our touch look. Ooh, no touch is the call. Does that make the Mojo 0 for 3 on challenges today? It's the only thing they haven't done right. Yeah, there you go, there you go. <laughs> but the Thrill have ample opportunity to erase this forgettable day with a quick turnaround on Tuesday. 7 o'clock, first serve against Grand Rapids as Hippe has been a bright spot here late for the Thrill. She sure has, very bright every single time she steps out onto the court. She's a veteran athlete knows how to get the job done, sees the block well. Vegas looking for their first ace, but not if Vanderweide has something to say about it. Hippe will tool the block. And how good, aside from that one opportunity, has the libero in Shara Venegas been? Oh, I mean, she is locked in, and liberos are one of my favorite positions here in volleyball they're just so gritty defense is heart and attitude and those are two skills that you can't coach you either have it or you don't and liberos to do this job at a high level you have heart and you have that go-getter attitude and with another service error the mojo creep closer and closer San Diego, 0-4 in three set matches this season. But with that roof, nine match points coming up for the visitors. Sealing off that line with the left hand. And that a timeout ball from... Definitely going straight down. Glory will use a timeout and you wonder what the conversation has to be. We'll step aside and come back as the Mojo face match point. Thrill because one of their best players is also one of the best players in the world. We get a chance to see Alicia Glass Childress laser that goes over. Alicia Glass Childress helps get that nice Vegas looking for their first set of the day. They've got it for Grand Rapids. Glass Childress with a sneak attack. Sour Glass Childress Bell. And the Vegas Thrill come back to life, winning each of the last three sets. It's a Saint Patrick's Day edition. Yeah, we're celebrating St. Patrick's Day for tonight. It is volleyball night. Chasse gets a chance. And she oh, doesn't miss. Nana Dewar gets it. Morgan oh, Hans, what a job she's done keeping the fourth. Ooh, and a big block. Oh no. Point Atlanta. That block landed just out of bounds. Bell and the Vegas thrill come back to life. NCAA women's volleyball will never be the same. Students of the game will study this era for generations. But we are only getting started. Sign up for pre-sale news and more at NCAA.com slash volleyball. Newt Sara Tomcom with nine match points here for the Mojo. And for the time being, Oblad keeps the fans on their feet. San Diego with two wins this season, both against Grand Rapids. This would be a monumental one for Coach Anif Park and company. It really will be, especially because it's on the road. They were able to really lock in their offense very well. In system, remember this is Ali Bastianelli's first pro start. She's been phenomenal, but the story is Temi thomas Ilara. And we will chat with her here post game. So stick with us as Vander Weide ends it. The Mojo, despite an early deficit in the first set, cruise to the three-set sweep here in Vegas. 
definitely was expecting a five setter here tonight, but you gotta give it to the San Diego Mojo. They showed up and they showed out. It's a road trip for them here. A little puddle jumper, one may say, from that San Diego flight to Vegas, but you gotta give it to San Diego. They were locked in on their defense. They were locked in on their serve receive. They came in and they got their job done. These two teams will meet again April 26th in San Diego. For now, we will step aside and come back with Tenny Thomas, I, Laura, and our final thoughts here on this Sunday afternoon. Pro Collection Apparel today. Available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyballshop.com. For the third time this season, Temi Thomas Zylara registers 19 or more points right on the jersey number as we welcome our player of the match here courtside alongside Victoria Dennis and Daniel Gilman. Temi Thomas, Ilara, congratulations. I have to ask you, as a rookie in this league, what's the difference between going on the road compared to in college? Oh, going on the road compared to in college? I feel like it's pretty similar. Um, I will say the hotels have been a lot bigger because <laughs> we're in some pretty big cities, whereas in the Big Ten, some of the cities are kind of small. Um, but overall, I feel like it's pretty similar. And then as you take a look at a 6 nothing deficit in the first set, what was the conversation from your head coach in that early timeout? It was kind of like, find your rhythm. We've been out of matches for two weeks. We need to figure out how to just find our rhythm. And once we do, we can just get it rolling. And I think that's what we did in that first set. What was a testament to finding that rhythm? A lot of the time coaches will say, oh, it's serve and pass. It's finding ways to score and transition. But what specifically in this road match were you able to earn a sweep? I think 
one of our biggest focuses this past week was working on our first ball side out because sometimes we just get stuck in a few rows um, and I feel like in that third set especially and once we got rolling in that first set we were siding out first or second ball which makes it a lot easier um, to come back. And when you're approaching to attack the ball, your footwork is fantastic, by the way. You have a high elbow, high arm. What are you seeing when you're attacking the ball in real time? In real time, I'm looking for hands. If I don't see any hands, I'm going to swing. If I see hands, I'm going to try to tool them, um, place the ball in a good spot, and knowing your out shot. So, like, on the right side, out shot is that deep corner or that 1-6, like, seam. Or, sorry, 5-6 seam. Well, you got a lot of season left, right? You've only played seven games. And so now as you move into the latter portions of this season, how do you feel like the identity of your team can build now into the later portions of the year? I think we just have to keep focusing on getting 1% better every day, every match. Um, that's kind of been like our saying, it's 2-12. Uh, I can explain it a little bit, but water starts boiling at 2-11. Or at, yeah, at 211, and then once it gets to 212, that's when it like um, like evaporates. And our little saying is 1% better, get that one degree better every day. I love that. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Demi. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And we Congratulations. Wanna, we want to send a thank you to all of our thank you sponsors as well here. So from Limitless Sports Medicine to National Youth Sports Nevada, the Skin Company Lab with eSkin, of course the Nevada Army National Guard, into Thomas Pennington, Lim Tong, Finley Toyota, Clark County Credit Union, and Thrillville. And well, as we wrap up this broadcast, Victoria, I have to ask you, from the first 10 minutes of this match to the last hour and a half, what did you feel the mojo did to change the momentum? Well, they changed the momentum because they were able to execute and serve receive. They were slow out the gate with that 06 start, and what they changed was they started passing volleyballs. It's pretty simple volley science, that old serve and pass game, but when you apply it, when you execute, you will find success. So San Diego picks up their third win of the season. They will come back and head towards the number one seed in Atlanta on Saturday. Vegas is right back here on Tuesday, 7 o'clock against Grand Rapids. And until then, we will see you in a couple days as Las Vegas starts hot, but San Diego comes in with a fury and wins it in three sets. On this ninth island night, we thank you so much for joining us, produced and directed by Kr Joe Kruger. For Victoria Dennis, I'm Daniel Gilman saying so long from Vegas on this Sunday. Available exclusively at renathletics.com and provolleyball.